Hello guys, it is Briggs Boy here, welcome back to my channel and today I of course have another of my football match day vlogs for you guys to sit back and enjoy. So today's game is Rovers versus Middlesbrough. It's going to be a tough game for Rovers, we go up against a team that have the best defensive record in the league so far this season. They currently prop up in the playoffs in a sixth place. Rovers have lost our last three games in a row though, so it's certainly not going to be an easy game. So then, moving into the facts and figures into this match today against our visitors at Middlesbrough. If we take a look at the league table at this moment in time, our visitors sit in sixth position on 51 points. And then Blackburn Rovers, of course, after three straight defeats, we've moved down to 14th position uh, on 43 points. On the Wednesday of this week, of course, Blackburn Rovers suffered a 2-1 defeat against Reading over at the Majeski Stadium. I think what made it frustrating for us is that we controlled the game for large parts. We just didn't show that attacking flair to uh, get that extra goal, get at least something from the match. Middlesbrough, on the other hand, when they had their midweek game earlier on in the week, lost 1-0 away at Sheffield United, a team which had been on top-notch form this season. So the previous encounter between Middlesbrough and Blackburn Rovers, of course, ended in a 1-1 draw back in December. Charlie Mulgrew was the man that got the goal for us back then with a free kick. It's certainly not going to be easy going up against the team with the best defensive record, though, at home at Ewood part this afternoon. So then Middlesbrough's current top scorers, the danger men so to speak, currently are Britt Asombalonga who has 11 goals to his name, quite impressive. And then Jordan Hugill, of course on loan from West Ham after signing from Preston, has 7 goals. Key players for Middlesbrough then, for me, Darren Randolph has to be one. He's kept a lot of clean sheets for Middlesbrough this season and he's helped solidify that defence of theirs, which is why they have got the best defensive record in the league. We know he's a cracking goalkeeper and he always did well when he was in the Premier League. Likewise, you've got Aidan Flint, who of course signed in the summer, and Daniel Ayala, two very good centre-backs. But good news for Rovers is that both of them will not be playing in today's match. Ayala misses it through suspension after getting a red card against Sheffield United midweek, and Aidan Flint is missing due to injury. And then, of course, we've got British Ambalonga and Jordan Hugill for Middlesbrough. That could be a threat today. Usually, they play one up front. However, we could see them go for a more attackive lineup this afternoon maybe play two up there with Britton Hugill but I guess we'll wait and see when the team news comes out later on. My score prediction for today's game then I'm going to go with an optimistic 1-1 draw I think if Rovers even get a point from this that would be a very strong point indeed so then without further ado let's crack on with the vlog Head over to Ewood Park and see how this game gets on. Make sure to leave a like down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit that target of 3,000 subs before the end of the season. So every single subscriber towards that number helps an awful lot. And your guys' support has been amazing over the past few weeks. So thank you so much for that. But anyway, let's get on with the vlog. <sighs> So there we go then, that is full time of the match and unfortunately Rovers suffer our fourth league defeat in a row this season after losing 1-0 to Middlesbrough out there this afternoon. So yeah, it's all over, but a one, <clears throat> Blackburn nil. From what I you, Blackburn, I expected a little bit more from them the first half, I thought they were very poor, didn't create a lot, I thought we on the other hand were fantastic first half and really... We should have been out of sight, and I know that might sound whatever, but we had two free chances where we should have really took them and put them to bed, really. And going to half time, we should have been afraid a lot. But quite a second half, to be fair to Blackburn, that's when they started creating a little bit more. Danny Graham had a chance later on, where she should have scored. Randolph put off an amazing save in about 87 minutes to deny the player. I don't know who it was on the six yard line, but like I say, when you, say when, you know, he got down like a cat and saved it. Press on Belonga, took his goal very, very well from Ashley Fletcher's cross. Overall, I'm happy going home with three points, but Blackburn, yeah, like I say, man, they disappoint me a little bit. Um, you know, but no doubt they're going to bounce back from this result and probably go up the table a little bit more. Over and out. Cheers for having, cheers for having us, Blackburn. Up the butter. I think, to be fair, the first half we were absolutely appalling. Like, there was clearly no formation there. The plays were switching about the positions every other minute. Uh, defensively, Mulgrew had an absolute shocker in that first half. Williams obviously got that red card from a Mulgrew mistake, so he kind of, you know, he was the one punished for that instead of Mulgrew. Uh, Rodwell picked up a yellow. It looked like we were on a really tight rope. They're obviously going down to 10 men. 
Uh, Fletcher got the goal for them in this game, by the way, for those that weren't there. Uh, but going into the second half, Mowbray made a triple substitution, which I don't think I've ever seen in any football match, let alone a Blackburn Rovers match, at half-time, bear in mind. So Amari Bell came on uh, in left-back. He actually won man the match. He had a brilliant game, to be fair. And uh, going forward, I think he's been really solid last few games. So he's got to keep a place in that starting eleven for me. Uh, we also had Lewis Travis, who came on for Corey Evans, in effect. So... He also, I thought he did all right second half in that midfield. And Ben Broughton obviously went off, ran in, became back in uh, for Jack Rodwell. So a couple of changes there in the defence. Overall, I think second half we were a much better team. We took the fight to Middlesbrough a little bit more. Bradley Dack had that effort, which Darren Randolph pulled off an amazing save to keep it 1-0. Likewise, Middlesbrough had quite a few chances and David Ray was on top form today to uh, keep it at bay with just that one goal with some brilliant stops from him. John Obi mckell it's obviously the first time I've seen him uh, since he left Chelsea several years ago, and I thought he was like, he ran the show in midfield. He is a cracking player, and I am just surprised that no other Premier League club has tried to sign him. The only thing that kind of bugged me about the game is that they did do quite a lot of time wasting. I can't understand that myself because they obviously were 1-0 up, going up against a 10-men side, so we were weakened, uh, and we were, been, we were by no means playing our best football that we have this season. So that did bug me a bit. I thought it kind of takes away the edge off the game. They should have just carried on carried on attacking like they were. Overall though of course it's a 1-0 defeat, four in a row for Rovers but I think we can take positives from it. Going into the next match of course it is Birmingham away. For me Amari Bell's got to start in defence, Ryan Niambi as well. Uh, Derek Williams is obviously going to miss that through his red card suspension so it gives us no options really but to have Mulgrew and Rodwell in centre back. But I do think Mulgrew He's not as good as Daryl Lenihan. It's as simple as that. With Lenihan being injured, I'm just hoping it's not going to expose us too much. Uh, but Mulgrew, he's found the step up part of the championship, I think. I think he has struggled, to be honest with you. And it's not something I've really talked about in the past, but it's becoming more and more obvious over the few games I've seen him recently. And he is a bit of a weak link in that side. We know he's brilliant at free kicks. He's got a really good corner delivery from set pieces and what have you. But he's defensively, he's just a bit suspect, you know. He's like not beating the bounce to the ball. He's making simple errors in defence and they are costing us. And it's going to come to a point where, you know, hopefully Mowbray says, you know, Lennihan's going to have to come in there or somebody else's because he's just losing us points. Hopefully we can start winning again, get on a winning streak, you know. It soon builds up the confidence once you do. Uh, we just don't want to keep this losing streak going on for too long because it is frustrating. Rightfully so, fans are frustrated and they are asking questions about the team's performance over the past few games. However, that's it. That's all I've got to say, really. So thanks for watching the video. Leave a like if you have enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Also, a quick thank you to AJT, the Middlesbrough supporter and vlogger that, of course, featured in this video there at the end. Uh, I also feature on his, so make sure to check that out. Make sure to subscribe to his channel. The link to that will be down below in the description.